where our frustrations maybe should be directed, Rod. So, so look, I mean, I'm not saying that you haven't criticised Boris Johnson today because you certainly have, but you're also very angry about the civil service role in this. Yeah, no, that's right. I, 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 you know, Dan, I think Boris Johnson should go. I think he should resign. I think he's lost any vestige of moral authority. And the worst of all for Boris Johnson is that he's miles and miles behind in the polls. And the only point of Boris Johnson was to be high in the polls. That's the only reason he's a leader of the uh, Conservative Party. But we ought to remember as well who it was who invited those people to that party, which he said he didn't go to and then decided he did go to. Uh, it was, of course, a civil servant. And it was primarily civil servants who attended the party. And it, it just shows up rather perfectly, this divide we have in our country at the moment between the private sector and the public sector, and particularly the most affluent parts of the public sector, which is the civil service, and particularly the Westminster civil service. Um, they genuinely do think they live in a different world to the rest of us. And when you look at sort of earnings and what's happened to them during during lockdown and during the pandemic, then you can understand why they do things that things are different for them. Uh, they have begun to earn more as a consequence of lockdowns and the pandemic, uh, whereas private sector people have earned less. There are more jobs in the uh, public sector as a consequence of the last two years, uh, whereas there are fewer jobs in the private sector. Uh, and if you look at the general state of play in terms of wages, they earn 13% more than people in the private sector. They work fewer days a week. They work fewer hours a week. They take more days in sick pay. They have longer holidays and they get bigger pensions. And that gap between the private and the public sector has been growing and growing and growing. And nothing has made it more stuck than lockdown and the pandemic. Because if you look at all the voices which are urging people not to uh, remove restrictions, that we should still be masked up, working from home and not doing a minute's work, it is the public sector and the civil service. All the way through, every voice in favour of not doing any work comes from the public sector. And the reason for that is very straightforward, very obvious. <coughs> they don't face the same commercial pressures that people in the private sector do face. Uh, they don't have to go to work and, and at the risk of losing their job because their company will close, because, of course, they work for the public sector. And this is the whole problem, and it's exemplified perfectly by this party. I couldn't agree more. I, I couldn't agree more. They're not going to lose their job, Rod. They're not even going to no. lose any of their salary. And I know you do too, but I speak to people even now, Rod, every single day who are struggling to survive, who are struggling to put food on the table because of these restrictions. And I know we differ uh, about whether the restrictions are necessary or not, because I would say they weren't even necessary then. But it's why we need to trust the civil service that they are only pushing for these restrictions when they are really necessary. And I think that party calls that into question, if I'm honest. I think it does. And I think there's a more fundamental point as well. Uh, I wrote about the divide between the public sector and the private sector about a year ago and predicted that when we began to emerge from this pandemic, they wouldn't wish to emerge from it particularly, and they would wish to retain all the privileges which, he had, which they had gained through the pandemic. Uh, and, and yet it's worse than that, because, in, because it is a mindset that in demanding that there should be more restrictions, that people shouldn't be going back to work, that the teachers shouldn't be going back, or if the teachers do go back, it should be part-time, and so on and so on. It, it, it puts forward their view of the world, which is that all this stuff can be done and nobody to pay for it. That, that actually none of us need to go to work, that we don't actually need to earn anything for ourselves. We don't need to make things for the country. We don't need to go to work to create the services which provide the money which pays for the public sector. They have sometimes got, somehow got it into their heads that this is a kind of fairy tale existence where people could be perpetually paid very high wages and very high pensions with very large holidays for no work being done whatsoever. And that is a real problem once we emerge from this pandemic.